Okay, welcome to the Space Limited Accomplishments Interval. I'm Lance Ash, and this is my wife. Howdy. Her name is Bonnie. And we're on our way to work after a three-day weekend. And the uh, initial thing to say is uh, I'm a little worried that I might have taken two thyroid pills by mistake. But it should be all right. Uh, second thing, let's go over the weekend. What did you do this weekend, Bonnie? I cleaned. I organized. I did all kinds of little projects. In other words, I wore myself the fuck out. I was dead for relaxing on a weekend. But yet again, we didn't get the laundry painted. Um, well, I hurt my back moving the armoire. In order, but the you moved it? I thought the boy was going to move it. I moved it, but it is now taped. So maybe next weekend we can get you to move the armoire next time. How did the uh, how did the ladder work out for him? The ladder did not work. The ladder is too large. Really? Well, she's got a smaller one, but it's camouflage pattern, so you better watch out. You know. We're just. <laughs> I'll shoot it. <laughs> um, we'll just have to use the chair from your your room, and I'll probably have to get him to get the very tippy top corner which is like what 11 feet high or something <sighs> anyway okay but by god a lot of other stuff got done dear yeah i got damn near finished with the painting and uh did some drawing played guitar i i've been stuck on trying to write a song and you know um that last one I did, The Ballad of Keith Hefner, I thought was really good. I've listened to it, I don't know, a dozen times. I wish I had multi-tracking um, capabilities so I could throw in a little, I don't know, harpsichord or something. Um, I have the weirdest dreams, most detailed. And the one I had this afternoon was mind-boggling in its precision and weirdness. There was a time period around 68 when mainstream America embraced some of the trappings of psychedelia and in fashion and in graphic design and there was a lot of um, shitty humor that I think was accepted because everybody was drunk back then. And um, the dream I had started off with me being like a fly on the wall observing this whole parade of uh, really crappy um nightclub acts from that time period and it was like filmed it was like a Jerry Lewis special or something and it was just the the room was like you know um oh look at all the cows laying down in the sun that's cool but anyway it was like uh what what's the word like magenta colored textured wallpaper on the stage and people doing like like in the old in the old days comedians would come out and say now I'm going to do a complete parody of a John Wayne western they would have to explain the premise before they did it and then they'd do the whole damn thing and it was just lame but everybody was drunk so they didn't care and it was presented as a series of uh uh like this matches this LP and I would see the cover of the LP you know with that sort of um, Pushman Studios um, graphic design and stuff and that led in that part of the dream led into you and I went to a book sale and um, I was picking up all these cool books but then I saw the prices were just outrageous, so I decided to steal a couple instead. And um, 
but it, again, it was that kind of really intricate graphic design in these things. And I could just see everything in the dream. Very odd. And of course, your natural reaction when you wake up is, is I'm going to draw some of that, you know. As you get older, though, you realize you can't do everything in the world. You're running out of time. Do you ever have funny dreams? Yes, and then I remember, I forget them. You forget your dreams? Yeah, a lot of the time because I'm so in... When I wake up, I, I've just got to pee. <laughs> That's all I can think about at that moment. Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Huh. I've reached an age where I have to pee a lot more often. And I can't sleep eight hours straight like I used to. When we first got together... We slept in those two beds pushed together to make one big bed. And I would sleep on my back with my hands folded on my chest like I was in a coffin. And I would sleep eight hours straight like that. Like clockwork. Lay this, go down, lay down to sleep. Count ten backwards and be asleep. And then wake up, boop, ready to go to work. Now it's roll over, roll over. On the left side, on the right side. Oh, God, you got to get up and pee. Lay back down. Left side, right side. Get up and pee. Very frustrating. I think it's leading to uh, mental disorders. Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. I had a... I snapped at work last week at <laughs> somebody for uh, moving my stuff in the break room. And, and uh, I felt... What did he say? <laughs> I felt bad about it. So about 10 minutes later, I back, went back to him and, and apologized. And he reached up and grabbed my arm and he said, That's okay. I've known for some time about your mindset. Meaning... Boom! I, meaning, I, I've known for a while that you have, uh, you know, borderline insanity. <laughs> that nine-inch scar on top of your head doesn't help. Yeah. It's a constant reminder to folks. Yeah, I can feel the edge of where the scar begins, right behind my ear. So I had 32 staples in my head. I've had five brain surgeries. Three invasive, two by radiation. So, there's no telling, you know, what trauma my brain has endured. The last time they actually cut away part of your skull before they've been able to go up through the nasal cavity. And that's, that has really, really affected you more than those other surgeries. Oh, what fun. Yeah, I got a picture of me. I don't think it's online. I think it's just... It's in your... Um, cam. Your uh, Gmail docs. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's one side of my head is puffed out like um, a pin cushion or something. There's a guy down there at the, at the graveyard staring at a grave all by himself. Usually you see that, see that kind of thing with a group of people, but it's just one guy staring at a grave is rare. Anyway, so Bonnie and I finished watching the available uh, episodes of Endeavor, and season six ends... Seven. What? I thought the season says season, uh, se blah, blah, season seven was the one that's coming out soon. Season 8 is coming out. Okay, so season 7 ends really, really good, just like uh, season 6 did. Not as good. I thought it was sort of a retread, but still tense and emotionally uh, satisfying. I We really, we, we used to watch um, David Suchet's performance of uh, Hercule Poirot and really enjoy those but compared to the I don't, yeah compared to the depth that's that these modern shows have it's nothing you know we also tried that David Attenborough thing about the end of life on the planet yeah it was really depressing I ended up in tears we got through half of it maybe and we're like I don't think we can finish this. It was really sad. Well, I read a little synopsis of it online, and it says that he ends on a 
you know, a, a, a word of hope, like this, this is what we can do to, to make things better and so forth. But, you know. Oh, Lord. It's bad enough contemplating your own inevitable demise, and you have to think that the whole thing's going to come to, be, to an end, too. Uh, but, you know, Buddhism teaches us to accept these things. And <laughs> Except we're not Buddhist. <laughs> no. And then there is the Christian philosophy of Jesus is coming back. We might as well just strip and rape the planet of all of its resources. Because what does it matter? Jesus is coming back. Yeah, it's amazing how capitalism and, and Christianity go hand in hand. It's fine. Um, yeah, well, I don't want to get into all that. That's too depressing. So I sent you an article this weekend. I don't think you even read it, but the um, gist of it was Democrats are getting the vaccine, Republicans aren't. There's something like 47% of Republicans said they would never get the COVID vaccine. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, this really is... A dividing line in our country and these are the people that claim that they're pro-life and yet they're out there like today I saw the idiots piling out of this evangelical church and it was just one person after another after another and no mask drove past another church and again all these people gathered and they were they had a little I don't know what a icy stand or something outside and they were all out there congregating and talking and all maskless and they didn't give a goddamn. and so those people they have no right to claim the, the status of pro-life anymore well the, the lesson that I took away from the David Attenborough documentary was there's too many goddamn people on the planet oh hell yeah but you'll hear um, people who are totally in favor of the capitalist system the the cycle of eternal expansion say oh oh the birth rate is declining how will we support these social uh, safety net programs that you evil communists have put into place and so forth um and also who's going to be the workforce and Every person on the planet should have 15 babies, and all of them can have Cadillacs, and it's just, you know, ridiculous. <sighs> I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I'm torn between being some sort of activist and taking the Allen Ginsberg mindset of, I, I'm just working on my own personal self-development. I've done given up on trying to save the, the world so um, I don't know doing my art is generally enough to um, make me feel better about everything uh, today um, Bonnie gave me a haircut and um, she did it right before I took a shower so I'm sitting on a chair in the bathroom, naked. Now I've been lifting weights for seriously for several months now, with the intention of not turning into uh, Franco Colombo, but uh, just losing some weight, you know, toning up. And I'm standing. This is right. I just woke up, so I'm not all pumped up or, or, or you know, excited. Standing, looking in the mirror at myself, and I'm like. You're just the same old schlub. You're, you're, drinking, you're getting your grandfather's body. And I'm like, all this weightlifting, what, what's, what's the point, you know? But anyway. Any comment? No, no. You did a good job on my hair, though. Oh, thank you. I've had a lot of experience for the past year of COVID warrant. Yeah. long time, I don't know when it was, but I don't know why I would have been over there, but I was over at my grandparents' house, and 
my grandfather came out of um, his room and he didn't have a shirt on and either my dad or his brother were there was there helping him do something he, he wasn't feeling too well and his um, arms from the elbow down were you know really red from being out in the sun but the rest of them was really pale and I just thought oh my god he's an old man but he used to be a young man one time and it's just so ugh, it's such a horrible feeling I've only known him as an old, old you know, as, as an old man, to me, but even though when I was a little kid, he's probably 50. Uh, yeah, he was your age, probably. Yeah, isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah. And I remember my grandmother always being an old lady, but it's really depressing. It does. Don't know. Don't care. Watch out for Mr. Truck there. Mm. I feel kind of lost now that we've watched all the Endeavor episodes because you've gotten used to seeing something engaging and now i got to go back to just... I'm so glad to be free of it, quite honestly. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I feel we've all done finish it. And it just, I'm glad that I don't have that obligation now. Well, this weekend I finally put into practice my, practice my new plan of not watching or not listening to YouTube as much while I was painting in the studio because um, it's just too irritating with the ads and um, the content is just not that great. So I, I listened to some stuff on my MP3 player. I listened to some albums by the Bonzo Dog Band and Firesign Theater. And, oh, uh, you sent me the, my favorite Vivian Stanchel song. Yeah. They did uh, that song. Hunting Tigers out in India is uh, like an old music hall song from the 20s or 30s. They redid it. Um, but. The two, well, no, I'm sure I should I should say three or four classic albums that Firesign Theater did are brilliant. Um, We're all bozos on this bus is brilliant. Now, and did Clay introduce you to them? Firesign Theater? No, no. Long time ago, there was a record chain called Camelot Music. It was a mall-based. Uh, store, and um, I was in there, must have been, I don't know, 13, 14, somewhere in there, and they had um, discounted LPs at the front, and they had their album, How Can You Be in Two Places at Once, and uh, I remember seeing it, not knowing anything about it, but just seeing the cover, and then many years later, I must have been about 24, um, I saw it on a CD somewhere and I bought it and uh, just thought it was brilliant so I slowly got into the other albums and um, Don't Crush That Dwarf is brilliant um, and um, oh shit what's the other one but anyway um so I did that while I was painting, and it was much more satisfying. I mean, I, I just, I'd rather listen to somebody talking or two people talking rather than music when I'm painting. But, yeah, but the ads. Listen to a lot of Mark Kermode movie reviews. And um, the interviews for the Archive of American Television is pretty good, too. So, let's see where we're at here. Yeah, we gotta, we're going to wrap it up here in a minute. We've got to come up with a theme for each, each, epi, uh, each radio show from now on. Our boring weekends. Yeah. I, 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 okay, I'll just end, end with this little anecdote. I was... 
my friend that lives in New York, we sent him birthday cards for his birthday. And he sent an email back thanking us and saying, probably going to go to this little island. Block Island. Block Island and rent a little cabin like uh, like we do every so often. It's very... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just sounded like this exotic, uh, wonderful thing to do. And I respond with, somebody move my lunch! <laughs> All right, so that's about it. Thank you. Bye-bye.